Hello and welcome to this screencast. My name is Jesse Anderson and I'll be guiding you as we talk about how to engineer big data solutions. This screencast is aimed at those companies who are about to embark on their big data solution. It's especially aimed at managers and executives who want to get a high level overview of how to engineer this big data solution and the overall steps to accomplish it. I've taught at many, many different companies. I've worked on various big data projects and I've spoken at various conferences. The content in this screencast is based on my observations and interactions with students as I'm teaching them. These observations go across a wide array of companies as they go through their big data journey. The biggest question as you go to start your big data journey is where do you start? It looks very similar to this picture. There are a lot of different ecosystem projects. Each one of the ecosystem projects has a name that doesn't correspond to its use. So you look at the list of ecosystem projects out there that are available for Hadoop and you don't really know where to start. The big difference with Hadoop is using the wrong tool for the job doesn't mean losing an hour. It can mean days or weeks or months of lost time. And given the expensive nature of creating big data solutions, losing a week can mean a significant amount of money lost. Before we dive into how we engineer our big data solution, we need to discuss what is big data. There are four main manifestations of big data. The first one is storing massive data sets. These are data sets that number into the tens, hundreds, or even petabytes in size. Another manifestation is the type of data in them. Do they contain structured or unstructured data? Do they have a variety of types such as images, tweets, blog articles, as well as video? A third manifestation is a large user base, where the user base could occupy the entire internet and the product requires a great deal of scalability. The final manifestation are things that are computationally complex. These are things like recommendation engines, where it requires a vast amount of computation in order to give the result. Now that you know what big data is, you can choose the right solution, because if it isn't big data, you might want to look elsewhere. There are other technologies that are out there for small amounts of data. Another thing to ask yourself is, will it become big data later on? In the sense that you may not have 100 terabytes right now, but you may quickly grow to 100 terabytes, or you may have a user base that will scale very, very quickly. Also more important is that there are less costly engineers, and there are more prevalent engineers for small data. Big data engineers will likely cost you more. If you do need a big data solution, you're in the right place and we'll start going through how do we engineer that. The first important step is to identify your goals. What you really want to decide is what you are trying to accomplish. Without a clear objective of what you want to do with your big data solution, you won't be able to accomplish it. One shortcut you can take is to look at what others in the industry are using Hadoop for, and you may be able to use it in the same way or in a very similar way. As you're identifying your goals, you need to figure out how you're going to accomplish them. I recommend going with a crawl, walk, run approach. This is especially important as you start your first big data solution. You want to start crawling by having an easily attainable goal. This may be something as simple as starting to store all of your data in Hadoop. From there, you can start walking. This is building on top of the work that you've already done in the crawl step. At this step, you have all of your data in Hadoop and you can start analyzing it. You may not be able to do complex analysis, but you will be able to start gaining value from your data. The next step is to run. In this step, you're gaining the maximum amount of your value from your data. You're doing complex analysis. You're gaining significant value from the data that you're ingesting. By creating your big data solution in several steps, you're able to prevent yourself from getting bogged down in some of the minutia while still starting to gain value from your data. Next, we need to identify the business value of our data. We need to think about what difference this data or the analysis from the data will make in the company. We'll need to identify how this data and analysis makes a difference in our bottom line. To do this, we need to think about what value there is in our data. You may already have an idea of what value there is in your data, 
but there may have been analysis or reports that were too difficult or too time-consuming to do with existing systems. Now that you have a big data solution, you may be able to go back and reevaluate if you want to try that again. You'll also want to see how you can augment your decisions with the data. Anytime you have a hypothesis about your business, you can use the data and analysis that you've already created to see if it's correct. You can also use the data to create new hypotheses. Finally, some data will directly benefit our customers. A great example of data benefiting our customers is a recommendation engine. If you've ever been on Amazon.com and went to a product page, you'll see the recommendations that are relevant to that product. The customers are directly benefited by the data because you can run recommendation algorithms and allow your customers to choose the right product that they want. Now that we've identified that we do need big data, we can go through and figure out which solutions we want to use. And you'll notice that it uses the plural solutions to use. This is likely because you'll be using Hadoop, its ecosystem, as well as other big data solutions. These solutions include NoSQL databases, as well as other big data solutions. There are a number of companies offering analytic products and charting products that are built on top of Hadoop. You'll also need to decide what you want to do. Do you want to process the data, or do you simply want to store the data? The two solutions are very different in their approaches, or you may want to do both. You'll also need to decide how fast you need the results. Sometimes you'll need the results in real time, and you'll use different technology solutions for those. Other times, batch is okay. A batch process can take minutes to hours to finish. For certain types of reports, that's completely acceptable. In deciding how fast you need the solution, you'll be using different technology solutions to implement. As you've decided which technologies you're going to use, you need to create the solution. However, you're going to have a skills gap now. Your developers are going to need the skills and tools in order to implement the solution. Your quality assurance people will need to learn the new system in order to test it. Your project managers will need to know what's possible and what's not possible given the new technology solutions. Having a big data solution opens up new possibilities of what can be done there will likely be a skills gap to implement your solution. You'll have to decide if you want to train your existing people or hire new people with those skills. Another possibility is to outsource the work to another big data company. A third possibility is to have an architecture review of your solution. When deciding whether to train, hire, or outsource, I recommend training. This is because a lot of other companies are experiencing the same issue. There aren't many qualified big data or Hadoop engineers out there, and the recruitment market for these skills is very high. You'll be competing against all these other companies that need big data engineers. For this reason, I recommend that companies train their existing resources with the new skills. To that end, training is the secret to project success. Often companies think that simply providing a Hadoop cluster is enough to get their engineering staff started. I've seen this happen at other companies, and simply providing the resources is not enough. The shiny new objects will not get used because you need the skills in order to use them properly. Providing the proper training will save your project money. I trained at one company who was six months into their big data project. They didn't do their training beforehand and lacked the skills necessary to implement it correctly. A company losing six months and delaying the release of its software is very costly. I estimate that this company lost several hundred thousand dollars by not training up front. To that end, on-site training is personalized and focused on your big data solution. There are a variety of skills and languages that your team will need. For example, Hadoop uses Java and Linux. A company that has extensive Windows background will need different training than that of a company who uses Linux already, or who already has Java skills. Now that you've been trained, you can create that proof of concept. I recommend using the cloud in order to create this proof of concept. You could decide to use this for demos, or as the work progresses, you could bring production workload in. 
Using the cloud, you can scale up or scale down your cluster to meet your usage needs. Now that we've talked about the steps, let's go through them once more. The first step is to figure out if you really have a big data problem. You'll remember the four general manifestations of big data. If it isn't a big data problem, using small data solutions is the way to go. Or if you will grow to have a big data problem, you want to address that technical debt as soon as possible. The second step is to identify your business needs. You'll want to clearly identify your goal for your big data solution. Step three, you want to give your team the training it needs to be successful. Not giving your team the training it needs can cause significant delays and those delays are very costly. Step four, after your training, you can choose the right tool for the right job you'll know which technologies are available and when they're supposed to be used. Step five, you'll write your prototype code. Step six, you'll deploy that prototype code to a cluster that you've spun up in the cloud. Now that you have your data in the cloud, you can use it for demo purposes or even start some production workflows. In step seven, you'll evaluate your big data solution. Was it successful? Did you gain value from the data? Were you able to make business decisions from your data? Did your data directly benefit your customers? Finally, step eight, you'll want to repeat because you did crawl, walk, run and created attainable goals for your big data solution. For the next iteration, you'll build on your current success and get even deeper into your analysis and gain even more value from your data. One other consideration is choosing the time to switch from a small data solution to a big data solution. There's both an inherent cost of cutting over from small data solutions to big data solutions, but delaying this will increase your amount of technical debt significantly. For example, a small company may have less code to switch over. However, they're going to have fewer resources to make this switch. A big company will have more legacy code and more projects to switch over. However, they're going to have more resources to accomplish this. I've seen this happen both ways. Some companies will delay the switch too long and they'll have vast technical debt. I know of one company still paying their technical debt after years of effort into it. Other times, small companies make it big and still are using a small data solution. Then they can't switch fast enough and lose customers as a result. No matter what, you eventually have to pay the piper. The longer you delay the switch, the more technical debt you're going to have. Once again, my name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a freelance big data trainer and consultant. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this screencast. If you'd like to talk to us more about getting your team the skills it needs to be successful at your big data solution, you can email us at info at smokinghand.com. Once again, that's info at smokinghand.com. Thank you again for watching, and I wish you the best of luck on your big data journey.